Hello everyone, thanks for joining us today. We will first discuss the Stanford Binet Intelligence Test. Alfred Bennett and Theodore Simon designed the first test developed to measure intelligence. Their test was designed in 1905 to identify children who had difficulty in school. This test was called the Stanford Binet Intelligence Scale. The examiner started with the easiest test and worked down the list until the child could no longer answer the questions. To demonstrate the Stanford Binet Intelligence Scale, I will be the examiner asking Sam questions. So, how many days are in a year? 365. How many days are in the month of March? 31. How many weeks are in a year? 52. At the end of the banquet, 10 people shake hands with each other. How many handshakes will there be in total? 45. And how many countries are in the continent of Asia? I don't know. Okay, see, we started with, started with the easiest questions and worked and up until the hardest until she couldn't answer any. Today, we use the current Stanford Binet Intelligence Scale, updated by Cherman, to measure four virtually universal abilities related to the traditional views of intelligence. These tests are most accurate for children, adolescents, and young adults. Um, Terman also introduced the now famous term intelligence quotient, or commonly referred to as IQ. Basically, one's IQ is a numeral value given to the intelligence that is determined from scores on an intelligence test on the basics of a score of 100 for average intelligence test. Next, we'll be looking at a commonly used individual test of intelligence for adults. Known as the Wessler Adult, Adult Intelligence Scale 3rd Edition, Wessler believes adult intelligence consists more of the ability to handle life situations than to solve verbal and abstract problems. Verbal, verbal skills weren't as important as common sense. This is how Wessler would test intelligence. Sam, what is this? A candle. And what does this candle do? It lights. Yes, and what else does it do? It provides heat. Okay, and what would happen if you touch this candle? It would be hot. Yes, and why? Because of the flame. And what would you do if your finger felt the flame? I would pull away. Good. The only problem about these tests is that the fact that they are t very time consuming and costly. For these reasons, test makers have devised group tests which a single examiner can administer to many people at once. Instead of talking to a person, you simply write down the answers in a book. This eliminates bias on the part of the examiner, examiner and allows answer sheets to be scored quickly and objectively and collects data from large numbers of test takers. However, some disadvantages is that the examiner cannot notice whether a person is tired, ill, or confused by the directions. An example of this would be the SAT. Performance tests do not discriminate based on language. They are tests that use visual elements. The Sagoon Form Board was one of the earliest performance tests and was just a puzzle. People can make correct choices and figure out problems without any words. This standardized form of tests makes it easy for people of different languages to measure their abilities against others. Culture fair tests minimize and eliminate the use of language. They also downplay skills and values that may discriminate culturally. In the Good Enough Harris drawing test, for example, people are asked to draw the best picture of a person that they can. Hola, como estas? Hi, I speak English. Let's take a test. No me comprehendo. I hope that test is cr culturally fair so we can fairly compare our scores. Biological measures are beginning to be recognized in intelligence. 
The correlation between brain size and intelligence is weak, but it is still there. I have a bigger head than you. That means you must be smarter. Yay, I'm smart! <laughs> Psychologists define reliability as the dependability and consistency of the scores that a test yields. I wonder if my score will be the same as last year. I hope it's not harder. Oh, I got the same score as last year. Uh, Mrs. Malloy told us it's reliable, so I guess that's why we got the same score as last year. One way to create alternative forms is to split a test into two parts. If the scores on the two halves agree, the test has split half reliability. <laughs> a test's ability to measure what it has been designed to measure is called a test validity. Constant validity describes what the test is example or of skills or knowledge that it is supposed to measure. How do you think the test is going to be? I don't know, but my sister told me that it has a lot of English and calculus on it, and she scored pretty well. I'm, I know it's not the same test, but it should be similar. I should score pretty well because we usually get the same scores in our testing. One day later. It looks like your sister was right because all three of us did well on our scores. Looks like we all, it looks like we all took the same test. I guess the person who wrote this test really validated their validity in scoring us accurately. IQ tests are very controversial in this society. Their content brings up much debate about whether these tests are fair or not. My mom was telling me that Bill Gates uses an IQ test when he is deciding who to hire. I am worried because my uncle is trying to get an upper management position at Microsoft. He told us that he had not s scored that high on his IQ test in the past. My dad took, this, took something called the Goldman's test, which doesn't really look at just IQ as... And he did well. Maybe they will let your uncle take the test instead. I don't think that hiring someone based on the IQ is fair since they don't take into account their passion, willpower, and determination for what they do. It sounds like the test your dad took makes more, much more sense at the workplace. Something like an IQ test should be used for a graduate school, not a job. I agree.